Okay, so I'm recording this on Friday. It won't be out until Monday. Hi, people watching this on Monday. And after that, so if by chance the Republican caucus of the United States House of Representatives has managed to successfully elect a speaker by now, just go ahead and ignore me. But, House Republicans, if you are still deadlocked after, what, 30 or 40 ballots, I think I have the perfect solution. I know some of you are probably thinking, why should we trust this guy? He hates us, and it's true. I do hate you. I oppose everything you stand for, and as politicians and human beings, I generally think you're all the shits. But I also think it's important that one of the two chambers of my country's national legislature be able to, you know, function. So with that in mind, I would like to propose the nomination of the ideal compromise candidate for Speaker of the House, the gentleman from New York, Mr. George Santos. But how can we possibly consider George Santos for Speaker of the House? Some of you are asking, I have no doubt. He's a liar and a fraud. Okay, first of all, since when is being a liar and a fraud a problem for you all? Maybe 10 or 20 years ago, you could have pretended that you cared about things like truth and integrity and not being a criminal. But after the war in Iraq, the Tea Party movement, the election of Donald Trump, come on, fellas and gals, who are you trying to kid? George Santos lied about his past, you say. What lies did he tell? That his grandparents were Jews from Ukraine who fled to Brazil in the 1940s to escape the Holocaust? And isn't fear-mongering over government actions you don't like by comparing them to the Holocaust while simultaneously, implicitly, and sometimes not so implicitly, denying that the Holocaust actually happened one of the planks in your party platform? You should look. I think it is. What else did he lie about? He said his mother was a financial executive working in the South Tower of the World Trade Center on 9-11 and that she died a few years after the attack due to complications of being caught up in the dust cloud when, in fact, his mother was a home care nurse who died in 2016. Are you telling me you, members of the Republican Party, don't have sympathy for a politician who tried to exploit the memory of 9-11 for his personal gain? Really? Really? He raised money to pay for his mother's funeral expenses and then, allegedly, used some of that money to take a vacation to the Poconos. It's a little late to start acting like you care about one of your guys running a charity scam. Know what I'm saying? He lied about his real estate holdings and personal wealth. Know what I'm saying? He lied about his education, claiming to have attended the Horace Mann School, earned a bachelor's degree from Baruch College, and a master's degree from New York University, despite none of those three institutions having any record that he ever attended them. So what? You're Republicans! You don't support education? If he had gone to college, he'd just have been brainwashed by godless cultural Marxist professors. Stick to your own script, people! We all know you don't actually care about any of this. Hell, a bunch of you are probably guilty of some or all of these same things, and we just haven't found out about it yet. So get over yourselves with this whole, oh, he's so dishonest, it's a disgrace to our beloved institution bit, okay? That train has left the station, and you motherfuckers were driving it. What else do people have a problem with about Santos? He's wanted by Brazilian authorities for check fraud. He's a criminal. Know what I'm saying. You really have no leg to stand on here. George Santos has not done or said anything that is remotely inconsistent with the values your party clearly stands for. There's no legitimate reason for you to oppose him serving in Congress. What's more, he has numerous attributes that make him not only a model Republican member of Congress, but also the ideal 
choice to be your Speaker of the House. He's gay. That's great for you all. You can elect the first openly gay Speaker of the House and pretend you're not a pack of rabid homophobes. You love using tokens to deny your blatant bigotry. He would be the perfect person to settle disputes because he would be objective because everyone hates him. He wouldn't take sides. He's a hard worker. He must be maintaining all that bullshit about his family history, personal history, educational history, work history, financial status, plus staying one step ahead of the Brazilians all these years must have been exhausting. But until about three weeks ago, he did it. And finally, he's a vote you need. Your majority in the House is incredibly slim, and you need to hold every seat you've got, which, let's be honest, is why the possibility of expelling Santos from the House hasn't even been seriously discussed. That being the case, you should want to keep him happy. And during this Speaker election, you all have been pretty mean to poor George. Nobody talks to him. He just sits there all by himself. You all act like he's not even there. That's got to hurt his feelings. You need to make it up to him by electing him Speaker of the House. Think about it. Do you really want to end up with Kevin McCarthy as your leader, a guy so desperate for the job that he's willing to grovel and beg and give away all the power that office traditionally holds just so he can call himself the Speaker? Because unless you all get behind someone else, that's what's going to happen sooner or later. Wouldn't you rather have as your leader a morally hollow, intellectually bereft phony who cares about nothing other than attaining and holding on to power? In other words, a man who truly represents what your party is all about? Although, now that I think about it, I just described Kevin McCarthy as well, didn't I? Fuck it. Do whatever you want.